adnexal torsion and I'll label this diagram to better illustrate this point. This is of course the vagina, this is the cervix, this is the uterus, now this is one of the ovaries, and this is the fallopian tube. Now the adnexa is referring to this region right here, the region that involves the fallopian tube and ovary. So adnexal torsion is essentially twisting of this ovary and sometimes also involves the fallopian tube. And when you do have this type of twisting, what happens is the blood supply to the ovary gets cut off. Now that can lead of course to necrosis and this ischemia that results can be very tr troublesome and um, cause infertility down the road. So why would this happen? What are some of the risk factors? Mostly you're talking about women that are of reproductive age that are in their 20s and 30s that can develop this. Some of the risk factors include pregnancy. Another risk factor is any kind of procedure or process that involves induction of ovulation and then also ovarian tumors can cause torsion in particular ovarian tumors that are non-cancerous so benign in terms of symptomatology the way a patient will present is that she will have sudden severe pelvic pain and it may also be associated with nausea and vomiting and there will be a one-sided unilateral mass in that region and when you palpate it it will be tender in addition the patient can also have something known as cervical motion tenderness and what that is is that when you do a vaginal exam and move the cervix with the finger the patient will have tenderness. Diagnosis, well for sure the most important test to do is an ultrasound and it's done transvaginally instead of over the abdomen for better results and what this ultrasound will show decreased blood flow to the ovary. In terms of treatment you have to make sure that you save the ovary and also fallopian tube if the fallopian tube is involved and that is done surgically of course you have to surgically untwist the torsion but unfortunately if the tissue is already necrotic due to the ischemia then you have to go in and remove the ovary and the fallopian tube in a procedure known as salpingo oophorectomy which just means uh, removing the fallopian tube and ovary and if that does happen unfortunate complication is that this can cause infertility due to the loss of the ovary so let's take a look at a couple vignettes 22 year old college student comes to the emergency department with severe right lower quadrant pain. She says that the pain started approximately six hours ago and progressively worsened. Only medication is oral contraceptive pills. She is sexually active. Last menstrual period was two weeks ago. Uh, temperature is 37, blood pressure is 120, pulse is 80. Abdomen exam is significant for focal tenderness in the right lower quadrant. Pelvic exam reveals exquisite tenderness in the right adnexa closed cervical os and clear vaginal discharge. Lab studies show beta HCG is negative, leukocyte count is normal, and hemoglobin is normal. Most likely etiology of patient symptoms is, well let's go through these. Appendicitis will probably present with a increased WBC count, increased leukocyte count, and probably also with fever. And this patient is afebrile. Diverticulitis tends to happen in older patients and it also affects the sigmoid colon most commonly and if it does the pain will be in the left lower quadrant. Ovarian torsion is the answer to this question. Ruptured ectopic pregnancy, well she's not pregnant because the beta HCG is negative. 
Next question. 24-year-old woman comes to the office complaining of two days of intermittent severe right lower quadrant pain. She feels a heaviness in her lower abdomen and has a low grade pain all the time. A few days, a um, few times a day, the pain becomes severe in the right lower quadrant and then she may vomit. She has had no fevers or chills, but she has had a poor appetite secondary to the waves of nausea occurring when the pain became severe. She presents a piece of paper with lab values and urinary tests from her recent visit to the ER. Hematocrit 39, white blood cell count is 11,400, platelet count is 367,000, sodium 138, potassium 4, creatinine 1, ESCOT 18, SGPT 22. EOA was negative. Pregnancy test was also negative. Temperature is 37, blood pressure is 130, pulse is 100, respirations are 20. On physical exam, there is most likely to be well, looks like she's got some sort of a torsion event because uh, a lot of the clues are her age and then the severe right lower quadrant pain and how she's got this nausea and vomiting. So when you do the physical exam, you would most likely feel a mass in the adnexa. So the answer to this is B. Uh, certainly not going to have a normal pelvic exam in this kind of pathology. And rebound tenderness and guarding most likely is a scenario in which you have some sort of perforation. And tenderness at McBurney's point essentially is describing appendicitis. So her lab values essentially show a, a white blood cell count. That is pretty much normal, so that rules out some of the other choices. And finally... 31-year-old woman comes to the emergency department with midline abdominal pain that she reports is 10 out of 10 in severity on the pain scale, with 10 being the worst pain she has ever felt. The pain has been present for one hour. She has had no past medical history, and her last menstrual period was one day ago. Only medication is oral contraceptive pills, no allergies. She had an uncomplicated pregnancy three years ago and had an uneventful normal vaginal delivery. Temperature is 37, pulse is 90, blood pressure is 100, respirations are 15. Oxygen saturation is 96 on room air. Physical exam reveals a woman in obvious pain. There is a left adnexal and midline pelvic pain on palpation. A urine pregnancy test is negative. Ultrasound of the pelvis demonstrates enlarged left ovary with decreased blood flow. Most likely complication of this finding is, well, the ultrasound finding is characteristic of ischemia of the ovary. So most likely she's got some sort of torsion of that adnexal region. A complication is that um, if the ischemia leads to necrosis, then you have to unfortunately take out the ovary and that can lead to infertility.